The Wall Street Journal writing this, the Islamic State, quote, sees all sides as targets, with ISIS-K having records of attacking Russians, Chinese, Iranians, and Americans. Joining me now is Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson. He's the ranking member of the Senate Subcommittee on Investigations and a member of the Homeland Security, Budget, and Finance Committees. Senator, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks so much for joining me. Morning, Maria. I want to first get your take on this Boeing development. We are now uh, seeing breaking news that the board has decided to make the change. Dave Calhoun will step down at year end. Your thoughts to the issues at Boeing, uh, a, a, a window blowing out, wheels coming off planes. Is this a Boeing-specific issue, or is the FAA also culpable here for lax oversight? I would say both, and I would say in the, in the United States Senate, we haven't had hearing, held hearings on this. Uh, Chairman Blumenthal, Chairman of the uh, Permanent Subcommittee Investigations, I'm the ranking member. We're, we've requested that the CEO of Boeing come in and testify before a hearing. I also suggested we need to bring in some of the carriers that are using Boeing jets to, to discuss, you know, from Boeing's standpoint, their quality control and their subcontractor problems. But uh, the carriers need to talk about Based on that information, what are they doing to step up maintenance to keep the public safe? So this is something that is just screaming for oversight of the FAA and of, and of these businesses to keep the public safe. Yeah, I mean, look, the CEO says, I've decided this will be my last year as CEO. The stock obviously has been impacted. Business has been impacted. But the biggest issue of all is safety for flyers. Should we be afraid to fly? Well, listen, I, I fly a carrier that uh, flies almost exclusively Boeing 737, so yeah. I'm concerned. But again, that, that's why, you know, Chairman Blumenthal and I are holding a hearing, requesting the presence of these CEOs so they can hopefully provide comfort that they've got this under control. Uh, they they yeah. should be able to be brought under control. I mean, quality control, uh, we, we've been, we have systems in place for, for top quality, uh, quality control. Uh, obviously, Boeing has not necessarily been impl implementing those the way they should, but I'm hoping the carriers have the backstop of uh, excellent maintenance programs to provide uh, comfort to the public. Yeah. All right, let me move on, Senator. A lot to get to with you. First off, the Border Patrol Chief Jason Owens calling the crisis at the southern border a national security threat, something you've been saying for years. Watch this. At the end of the day, there's over 1,900 miles of border with Mexico. Now, when you talk about 20,000 Border Patrol agents, that sounds like a lot. But when you multiply that by 24 hours a day, seven days a week, across the entirety of the year, that number starts to dwindle uh, very fast. That is a national security threat. Border security is a big piece of national security. And if we don't know who is coming into our country and we don't know what their intent is, that is a threat. And they're exploiting a vulnerability that's on our border right now. Yeah, and we've got a real vulnerability, Senator. You know from your work what's going on down there at the border, but now we're also worried about ISIS. So apparently we heard from the FBI that ISIS is working with human trafficking networks at the southern border. How should we be watching this? Well, first of all, Marie, isn't this obvious? It's been obvious yes, for years. You see, I've been, I've been screaming that the Biden and the Democrats' open border policy is a clear and present danger to America. We, we have people coming in to our country from over 150 countries. You know, so many of these are military-aged men uh, from China, for example, but from other countries that are adversarial to us. Uh, the drug traffickers, the human traffickers, the, the sex traffickers. I mean, th this is obviously a catastrophe for this nation. Uh, you know, we're going to see the ramifications of this for years, if not decades. Does it really take an ISIS attack in Moscow to awaken the, the Biden administrations to the danger? I'm not even sure they're awakened to it yet. Is it going to take a horrific terrorist attack in America? Let's hope not. Well, what are they doing? I mean, when you see the thousands of people coming in on a daily basis through the border and those people who are intending not to get apprehended, the gotaways, what should we believe their motivations are? Are, are? are they setting something up here, creating new cells? Are the Chinese Communist Party directing the Chinese to come here to become saboteurs later on? What do you think? Well, we have reports from Darien Gap in uh, Panama of these camps. Uh, one of the camps is uh, basically populated by Chinese military-aged men. Uh, we have the non-governmental organizations operating right next to them. And, and what's so sick about this, Maria, 
is U.S. taxpayers are funding those non-governmental organizations as they're facilitating this invasion into America. Uh, again, we have people coming from all kinds of different adversarial nations to this country, P people that want to kill Americans. Uh, again, this is just an obvious, you know, extreme threat to our homeland. And yet, you ask, what are they doing about it? They're, they're requesting more funding. They got more funding, probably to be used to be more efficient at encountering, processing, and dispersing. And yeah. as you said, we, we have more than probably about 2 million Godaways. We have no idea who most of the people are that have come in, the more than 6 million people. We certainly don't know who the 2 million people who have been detected but uh, never were encountered or apprehended. We have no idea who those people are. Again, th millions of people. This is, you know, what is it? We're up to like 36 states have a population less than the number of people than Joe Biden and the Democrats in Congress have led in this nation. You know, but, obviously, but, this is an enormous national security and homeland security threat. I mean, it, it is obvious to anybody who looks at this, Senator. So why is it that the Republicans are having such a hard time actually securing the border? President Biden signed in the massive one and a quarter trillion dollar spending package over the weekend. And here again, no money for the border. It includes $200 million in funding for new FBI headquarters. You've got $120 million there for Border Patrol, but we don't know what that money is for. Is that just for creating more housing for the migrants coming in? Biden over the weekends calls this good news for the American people. Uh, he's urging Congress to pass more spending. He wants that $118 billion national security supplemental package uh, with money sent to Ukraine passed. And he also wants the killed border deal from the Senate passed. Your reaction? Well, first of all, I voted no on that spending package for many of those same reasons. I offered an amendment to basically defund sanctuary cities. That was voted down in a party line vote. So the problem we have here, Maria, is Biden and his Democrats in Congress, they want an open border. They caused this problem. And their allies in the mainstream media, uh, they're going to cover up for them. They've been basically ignoring this. They've ignored it until Mayor Adams, Mayor Adams and Mayor Johnson started screaming that their sanctuary cities were going to be destroyed by this inflow. So the media, mainstream media finally had to report it. But, you know, the negotiations that were completely bungled, uh, Democrats weren't looking to secure the border. They just wanted political cover. And unfortunately, they got some measure of political cover. I'm hoping the American public is smart enough to realize that, again, Biden and Democrats want an open border. They are facilitating this clear and present danger to this, this uh, uh, nation, a multi-billion dollar business model, some of those evil people on the planet. Again, this is a catastrophe, but the mainstream media, by and large, is not outraged, not like you are, not like I am. And so, so many Americans get their news from the mainstream media, and they're just clueless as to this clear and present danger. Well, part of it is the fact that you have such a small majority in the House, one vote, and, and you're the minority in the Senate. Uh, but I, I imagine everybody agrees that $35 trillion in debt is not a good thing for America and is only making us weaker. That, too, is a national security issue. I just spoke with the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget, Maya McGinnis, on, on how the U.S. can get out of this. Listen to what she said. Watch. It is about how you reduce the debt. And there are three basic ways you do that. You raise taxes, which the Biden budget does a lot. You cut spending, which the Biden budget doesn't do. And you grow the economy, which is something that we need to look at in all the policies that we're focusing on. Right now, the economy is in dire need of some fiscal responsibility, right? We have strong enough growth that we can accommodate. This is the moment where we should be looking at how to bring the debt down, not cutting taxes, not raising spending. We are ignoring the entitlement programs. This is not a priority at all, is it, Senator? No, I would say the number one component is economic growth. And so from my standpoint, you reduce the regulatory burden. So you, the, the you know, entrepreneurial animal spirits kick in America. You simplify and rationalize our tax code. I don't think we have to cut taxes. I don't want to increase taxes, but I want to simplify and rationalize our tax code, our regulatory environment, so we can have a free market to economy operate again. Uh, but again, Democrats like to overregulate. They like to overtax. They'll, they'll snuff out economic activity. And that's the worst thing we could do. All right. We will leave it there. Senator, lots of drama underway in the House, as you know, and in the Senate as well. Who do you want to see as the leader of the Senate at this point? I want to go through a process where we, as a Republican conference, understand what we stand for, what we're willing to fight for, mission statements, principles we're going to operate under, what our goals we're going to set, and hopefully out of that process, 
the leader and leaders will emerge. All right. We will watch all of that. Thank you, sir. Good to speak with you, as always. Senator Ron Johnson this morning.